Hey, are you looking to step up your game? Are you doing some Pokemon streams at this time and really struggling to increase your interactions with your audience? How about just taking away the whole steps of adding new Pokemon to your party each time something switches? Let's just have the computer do it all itself. What do I mean by that? Let's just take a look here using this little bar right above me. So right now I am running my Pokemon Heart Gold on Desmume on my Windows 10 computer. You can see here as my party matches up with my party over on this side here as well. So what I will do here is just do a quick switcheroo. And you'll see the Pokemon in that bar there change automatically for me. And you might be wondering, how do I do this? This must be really hard. I have to do some coding. Well, this method requires no coding whatsoever. It's not the easiest, but if you follow these steps, we will make this work for you. So sit down and let's see what we can do here. Hello, my name is Foss, and I'm here to show you today how to use the PokeStreamer tool for your Pokemon streams using Streamlabs OBS. So let's take a look at a couple things here right away. You will have to use a few documents which you can find linked below. First thing you'll need up here is these Pokemon images. So what this is, it's a file that has all the Pokemon from gens 3 through 5 named appropriately. They have to be named just like this for this Lua script to work. This will require no coding on your part. Just copy, paste it, follow these directions and hopefully this will work for you, okay? First thing we'll do after you've downloaded that, we're going to double check what our Desmume version is. Yes, I'm using Desmume, but if you have a different emulator that you run DS games on and has Lua scripting, L-U-A scripting, then go ahead and use it. But I'm going to use Desmume for this example. And when I go hover over it, you will see it does say the X64 release version of it. That is important for the next steps. Well, let's head over into our Google Chrome here. When we go into Google Chrome, you can see I'm already on the website I need to find, but let's just find the website right here. So just go into your search bar and type in PokeStreamer. The first result should be this GitHub page. The one that says Ever Oddish PokeStreamer Tools. Let's just click on that. And this will literally give you step-by-step -step directions, but maybe it's a little bit easier for you to follow the video than it is to follow this layout here. So let's take a look at a couple different things here. Okay, so when we scroll down, you can see this is also a setup that we can use with the Game Boy Advance, but we're going to be focusing here on the Desmume setup. So if you haven't downloaded Desmume already, go ahead and follow this download link. After you've done that, again, make sure you've paid attention to which version here you've downloaded. I have the 64-bit version. And then we'll have to go download this LUA DLL, which matches your version of the Desmume. This is necessary for the computer to basically write its own code for you to make this work. So let's follow that. And then I'll bring you up to this website here. The version that I'm going to use since I have that x64 version is this one right here. The win64 dll14 underscore lib. So I'll download that. Give it a few seconds to download. And once it's done that, let's go over into my documents here. And let's take a look at my downloads. So here you can see the whole zip file is in there. We just need this one item out of there. So we're going to take that. We are going to move it into our documents and in with our Desmume. So now you can see it is in here. So under my documents folder, this is just where I have my Desmume set up in the first place. Go to Desmume. There's that file there. We do have to rename it. Simple renaming. Remove the period between the five and the one. And now we're on to the next step here. So I'll close that. Go back over into the PokeStreamer website here. So next up here, we have a few things. And again, here it does say we have to rename it. We've gone through all that stuff already. And now we're on to this next part here. So we have to download these directories here. And you might be wondering where we find those in the first place. Let's go back up to the top. 
the top of the screen, you will notice this download code button. We'll click that. We'll hit download zip. Once that zip has downloaded, we'll head back over into our documents here. Downloads. And here is that PokeStreamer Tools master file. Depends on what you want to use. If you want to keep this and you want to use it for Game Boy Advance games plus DS games, keep the whole thing. Right now, I'm just going to focus on the Heart Gold and Soul Silver version that I am using. So let's click into that. Click into that again. Again, this is Gen 4 and Gen 5. So open that. And we just need two things. We will ignore the Soul Link. If you want to do a Soul Link challenge, there's an easier way to do that. I'll walk you through that in a different video. But for now, let's take the Gen, 5, uh, Gen 4, Gen 5 layout and the Gen 4, Gen 5 layout tables. All right, copy that. I'm going to bring it over into the Desmume file. And this is where I'm saving those Pokemon images that I showed you earlier. Those are also in the Desmume file, which is necessary. But we're going to add these two new Lua files in with the files there in the Pokemon images. Um, I've already done this before, so I have to redo that. But now if I go back in here, double click on the Pokemon images, you will see those two files are in there along with all the other Pokemon pictures. And then let's go to the auto layout to Gen 4, Gen 5 file. You're going to notice here we'll have to choose what game we're playing on, on the DS. So Diamond Pearl, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Black, White, so on and so forth. You can see my local game here is set at 2 because I am playing Heart Gold. If you were going to be playing Diamond Pearl, just change it to 1, hit File, hit Save, close out of it. Now you're good to go for playing Diamond and Pearl. Open it back up. I'm going to change it back to 2. File, Save, boom. Set up for Heart Gold and Soul Silver. After that, we can keep going. That's really all you have to do for now. Now we can break into the game itself. So let's do that. Open up Desmume. Again, if you're going to be emulating a game, it is important you are supposed to own the game, okay? There are ways to take the game from your DS, which is what I did, move it to your computer, okay? You can play it legitimately. You can stream it that way. Should be legal. If you're using hacked versions or anything like that off the internet, it's not legal, okay? Just keep that in mind. But what we'll do here, um, this was a randomized Nuzlocke that I'm pulling up here. I have my Pokemon Heart Gold version that's going to get rolling here. This is what my team currently is lined up as in the game. So let's take a look at a couple things here as we get things rolling. I just beat this game too. It was a heck of a Nuzlocke. So, okay. So when we're back on the screen here, we're going to look up here. You have the file, the view, the config, the tools, the help. First thing we're going to do, go into the tools here. And at the very bottom, we have this Lua scripting. And we can choose new Lua script window. Or if you've already done it before, there's an option here to choose the one that you've done before. But let's choose a new one. We're going to browse our files. And we're going to go back into documents, Desmume. Pokemon images, and we're going to choose the auto layout Gen 4, Gen 5. Okay, do not touch the tables and leave that in there. It's necessary for this to work, but we're not going to play with it right here. So now it's going to show that the script returned, but it's still running registered functions, whatever that means. But watch what happens here when I switch these Pokemon. So I switch Kenya and Terry around. You can see here my Lua script wrote a new script and actually change the files. So let's go back into our Pokemon file here. So this is that same file that we downloaded earlier, but a couple things are going to change. Let's scroll down to the P's here quick. And you're going to notice uh, if I get up to the top of the P's, a P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, T P6. Doesn't matter what those are. Okay. They can be Pokemon like they are right now. They can be Pokeballs, which I had them set to originally. Okay, that's one thing we can do, but let me move this off to the side. And let's go back over here again. So let's watch a couple things here. So let's just focus on P2 and P3 right here. Again, this is slacking PNG was copied to P2. 
So let's just change these around. Slacking and Vile Plume will be switched. And you see the file switched. So it actually renamed the pictures themselves to the right things. That's all that there is to it. It's pretty hands off. But let's see how we actually load this up in Streamlabs itself. Okay, let's focus on one thing right away here. It's going to be our sources here on Streamlabs OBS. Things I have set up here. I have the color source just for vi this video's purposes. That's not necessary going forward. You can have this right over the top of your video. You can have it over any background you have. Put it wherever you want. Okay, I just had this for this video's purposes. Take that off again. But then I have these two setups here. I have the party slots and I have the party mons themselves. So the party slots, as you can see, just the background image kind of sets the Pokemon apart. That's not necessary either. Just something I thought looked a little bit better. If you want just the Pokemon, of course, you can do that as well. This is just the way I have mine set up. But how do you actually get these to work? So let's just pull these both up. Let's take a look here. So when I drop down here at the party slots, you'll see I do have six slots set up. They're all the same image. Not really necessary to have that many, but all they are is an image from that folder. So if we go back to the Pokemon images here, let's just see here. So documents, Desmume, Pokemon images. This is that picture I'm using. This triple zero, just the Pokeball. I'm gonna go with that here. So we could just click add new source, choose image, it adds source. We can see here party slots one, two, three, four, five, six, all the same thing. If I keep going up, you can see I have P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. So you have to set up all of those um, for the party slots, not really necessary. You can have all just one party slot. For the Pokemon themselves, you do you do need a P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, okay? But party slots, again, I'll add that source. You can see here, I can make it whatever size I want. And let's just get an idea of how big this actually is. So if I do edit transform, I can just see the sizing I'm using for mine. So I'm just going by 140 by 140. It's a pretty small picture overall, but I don't want it to be overwhelming to my stream. So I have all of these Pokeball backgrounds set at 140 by 140. That also works well because that's the size that these images are in my save file. So that way they're all relatively the same size as the Pokeball background. Now let's take a look at the party mons themselves here. If you do have to add this yourself, let's just take a look at that here quick. So let's just do add, we're gonna add an image up here. I'm gonna click this little tab that says add a new source instead. We'll just do uh, Pokemon background. Add a source. We'll hit browse. If it doesn't pull up right away, you can just click documents, Desmume, Pokemon images, choose this image triple zero. We choose that one because it does not change. It's always triple zero, always the same image. Just hit OK. And we're good to go. Hit done. Boom, if you want to resize it, just right click, transform, edit transform. We do 140 by 140. Boom, it's the right size. If you want to, you just copy and paste this a few times. So copy, paste, 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 paste. Boom, you have them all wherever you want them, okay? Whatever works for you. Let me get all these off the screen again. So that's how you do the backgrounds. Line them up perfectly, lock them all together into one folder, which is what I have here. So my party slots, that way if I want to move it, um, they're, they're just going to move in tangent with each other that way. So kind of lines them all up, all that good stuff. But let's take a look at the Pokemon themselves. So again, we're going to add a new source. So click add source, image, add source. Again, up here, we're gonna hit this, add a new source instead. 
And we'll do Pokemon 1. Again, I would recommend naming them Pokemon 1 or P1, P2, P3, whatever works for you. We're going to add that source. And we go over here. We're going to browse again. And we're just going to type in P1. Should pull up P1 PNG. So if I said OK, that's that P1 slot in my saved Pokemon files. So again, down here, if I can find them here. So there's that P1 slot, which again will change every time you play the game. If you want to reset that, there's a little hint you can do there. So I usually recommend going up to this and then I'll open it. Then I'll just save. Save as. Uh, get it to the right place. Here. We're just going to save it as P1. It already exists. Yes, that's just fine. You can do that with each slot along the way. So now if I scroll down again, you're going to see you'll see that P1 is now that Pokeball image as well. So if we go back here, it's a Pokemon image or a Pokeball image as well on Streamlabs. So that's good to go. So let's just pull this back over here and we'll just keep that one up for now. We'll hide the other ones here. So we just see the one. Let's open up my Desmume again. Again, we're going to go into tools, Lua scripting. This auto layout Gen 4, Gen 5 is the Lua, the Lua script we're going to use. So once this is up, we're going to see how this changes here. Let me pull up my pictures here as well, just so you can see it changing on the fly as well. Got the big Pokeball. It's this one right here. And let's just do a quick switch here of the team. So Kenya, we're going to switch with Terry. Boom, we have Altaria. We'll hit Monchan up there. We have hit Monchan. So that is just my quick tutorial on how to use the PokeStreamer tool for your Pokemon streams on Streamlabs OBS. Again, this only works with emulators. One. Two, it only works with specific emulators. Okay, VBA and Desmume are the two that are well, this was designed for. You can't really do a whole lot of editing unless you are good at actually scripting or coding yourself. That's a different story. Then go for it. But this is kind of just a basic way to get into things. It's a pretty easy setup. Um, the hardest part was probably just finding all these pictures to begin with. But use at your will. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this video helps. If it did, let me know in the comments below. Leave a thumbs up on the video. Consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. Uh, if you're playing Pokemon Snap or anything like that, take a look at that playlist. I do have a Pokemon Snap playlist to show you how to find all the legendaries and how to get some of those four star photos in the new Pokemon Snap. And other than that, feel free to check me out on Twitch. I am live Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central Time in the United States here. Currently, I'm doing my own version of a... Well, I'm going to call it a Fuzzlock. Yeah, I call it a Fuzzlock, but what it is is a extreme surprise lock. So lots of trading involved there, but it's been a lot of fun. It's kicking my butt, but I'm going to stick with it. But until the next time, you guys have a good night. And again, catch you on the next one.